Welcome, or welcome back to Better Preparedness. After six years in Africa and back finally in Canada, it's a kind of a new reality. I'm back into Canadian bug seasons. I'm going to give you some of my top tips of bugs and you know, give you a little bit of a background about what is the bug risk when you want to come to Canada and when you want to go in the, the nature and because that's what so much of Canada is about, right? It's the outdoors, it's great outdoors. It might be canoe camping or bike touring or hiking, whatever it is. But yeah, bugs are reality. The bug seasons are staggered. They're not all right at once, you know, come springtime and boom, all of them, all the bugs suddenly appear. Ah, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna do. Here, the bugs are, have finally figured out that I'm here. There are many influences in terms of the bugs. It's gonna really depend from day to day and location to location. And there really are a lot of factors. Things like rains, things like dryness. If you're in a dry spell early on in the spring, that can have a, an impact. Is it, you know, are the winds, are you in a windy area? Right now, I'm here in the bush, so of course there's not much wind, but down along the water or on the lakes, that can influence their wind because that will help push the bugs away. Sometimes the bugs just simply don't want to be where you are. So that can be a way of influencing your exposure to the bugs. Heat versus cool, well, different bugs like different conditions. Some like warmer conditions, some will pretty much hide away in the, in the cool if it gets really cold. So sometimes you kind of accept less than ideal conditions so that you have, well, fewer bugs. And things like, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it nighttime? Again, all these factors really influence. And those windows where it gets really bad can suddenly change to really good. It depends on suddenly it gets hot or suddenly it's sunny or whatever it is. And suddenly the bugs disappear. Like right now, to be honest, the bugs should be absolutely eating me alive, but it's actually not too bad. It's one of the best days <laughs> in, the, in the six days that we've been back in Canada. I'm gonna run you through most common bugs that have impact much of Canada, but also in the northern United States and Alaska. And again, each bug seasons will depend on where you are and also depends where your latitude. So right now I'm in eastern Ontario, but if you are far up north uh, in Canada or Alaska, again, the bug seasons are going to be different because the start of spring, that's what sets off kind of the, the hatching process for a lot of these bugs. So it's going to really depend where you are in Canada. In Canada, you can go thousands and thousands of kilometers to the north of where we are and the bug season is going to differ a lot. The general window, I would say, in southernish Canada, I'm talking about the lower 500 kilometers of you know, Canada. I would say, generally speaking, it starts off with black flies. So after the spring melt starts to warm up, you have this period of, a, I don't know, it depends, two to four weeks that's just absolute magic where you really don't have bugs out and about. And that's when you like go do your camping. Yes, the water temperatures are cold if you want to swim or, you know, it might be cold rains if you end up with that. Sorry, I'm trying to swat some of these bugs away. But yeah, you really have this little magical window and then the black flies start up. The black flies are like a combination of a fruit fly and a butcher. And they have this little incision cut that's kind of like, you know, if you typically, if you see a little blood coming out of a, a bug bite, that's most likely a black fly and it gets pretty itchy. They're really small. Like they'll climb in here, you know, around the neck. Like I'm partially uncovered to help <laughs> be able to see and talk properly. Black flies might crawl in. So you got to really make sure you're cinched up well. So that typically where I am here in Canada is from about mid late May till mid June ish type of thing. By about the start of June, you get mosquito season, or it depends, it really depends again from year to year when things start up. The mosquitoes then start a few weeks after the black flies. And again, the mosquitoes are like the surgeons, they prick and you, there's really no trace other than eventually you get a swelling and it gets itchy. They're just omnipresent and the mosquito season is pretty long. The window can be about six-ish weeks. <laughs> And yeah, so that might go from, again, a couple of weeks after the start of black fly season, but then it'll go for maybe a month longer. You know, so well into July. You also get, then get deer fly and horse fly. They look a bit like a, a, an oversized house fly. And what I find is that they in particular love 
when my I'm out running, if I go out for a run in the bush or if we're out swimming, they love when that skin is nice and soft because they kind of take a bit of a biting action out of you. But they'll they'll search for you as you're swimming and you know you dive down, try to swim and relocate and come back up and they'll find you again. So the black uh, horse flies, deer flies, that season again is kind of late June into much of July and a bit of August. Then there are no CMs. No CMs are super small. These are like biting midges. And there's a reason why on a tent you have a net that's super, super fine. That's often called, uh, you know, no, no CM screens because uh, you barely see them and yeah, they, they like to nibble away. The ticks, ticks have been, you know, they've been around since the beginning of time, but ticks have become more and more a reality. There's problems with Lyme disease and ticks, you really have to be careful because it's, they're kind of the ninjas. They're really silent. <laughs> you don't really see them. You know, they're a lot on the, on the vegetation around. And again, you have to just cover up and also check your yourself and check your kids. They love to sort of crawl around and then start to burrow. And you, there's a real special way of removing them. There's a, I'll show a picture of a, a tick removal tool. There's quite a few of them, but ticks you have to be really careful about. Dragonflies, as a kid, dragonflies kind of always spooked me because they're so, they're huge, but they're actually really good. They eat a lot of those other ones. Although I find they tend to stay a bit more where it's sunny. So here in the bush, you don't see any dragonflies right now, but out in the clearing, you will see the dragonflies. So the problem is you're in the bush and this is not where the dragonflies are eating, but they do eat a lot of uh, flying bugs. So they are very much your friend. Although as a kid, they used to kind of freak me out. So you just have to kind of get used to it. All right, what can you do? Well, you can certainly cover up. You can see I've got a long sleeve. I've got a long, um, underneath, I've got a long sleeve as well because they can't bite through the layers. They'll get frustrated. I've got these old pants and ah, I'm going to show you here. These have elastic cuffs. I don't know if you can see the, the bugs just swarming. They're trying to find a way to, ah, I have to keep moving because then my clothing moves and they can't really bite through the clothing when it's moving. Bug juice. Well, in Canada, we call it bug juice, bug spray, bug repellent. And there's various things, various chemicals inside there, like DEET is the stronger one, and the higher the percentage of DEET, usually the more effective. But it's also, yeah, DEET's not perfect either. It's got health effects, and I try to minimize my use of it, but when it's really bad, you just have to kind of accept and use the, the level of, of bug juice that you need. Bug nets, this is an example. I'll put some, and I'll list some on betterpreparedness.com. Something like this is really useful. You can get these at the dollar store and always have a whole bunch of these because they're so compact, especially once you take it out of the package and you just put it over your head because it's easy to cover up your body. It's easier to cover up your arms and you know wear layers and stuff, but it's kind of hard to cover up your face. And so invariably your face is exposed. So that's why I highly recommend these. There's other ones that are a hat incorporated. Then you get the bug jackets, which is essentially a piece of clothing with a lot of screen, but you still need to separate whatever the screen is close to you or the bug jacket. You still need the hat underneath because they can't then bite through all those layers. August and September are really like the magic time. Really the magic time when you can go camping, you can go canoe camping, all these things in the wilderness where the weather is good, but finally the bugs, most of the bugs have died down. Ah. I'm actually wearing these gloves in part to protect my hands. But yeah, August, September are, can be some magical times to go camping, even through October, depending on the weather and the temperatures. But that can be a great time to go camping because really there's hardly any bugs. And sometimes you can even sleep under the sky, under the stars, because simply there's nothing left biting. They've all kind of run their season. Well. I hope you enjoyed this better preparedness video. If you did, please make sure you like the, click that like button, click the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing a fair bit of Canadian content now that I'm back in Canada, but I've got a ton of my South African and general African content that I filmed. I just haven't had a chance to release and everything. So check out betterpreparedness.com. Thanks for watching better preparedness. Stay bug safe. Just, you know, just be mindful. I think you can still have great time if you cover up. And again, something like a bug net over your head, it can really help keep the bugs off of you. And yeah, there's times of the day, right? So trying to 
try to figure out what works best for you and make sure you get out and enjoy that wilderness. All right, thanks for watching Better Preparedness. Take care and enjoy.